Welcome back to Shane's DIY. A little over uh, four months ago, I ordered, I pre-ordered the uh, Spectrum Sky ID, uh, port number SPMA9500, and it's finally arrived. Been a lot of sketchy information. A lot of YouTubers putting out videos on this thing, you know, without all the information, and been kind of annoying actually. All the different videos coming out with they don't even really know exactly how it works or what it does. But uh, obviously, it's a you know, it's an FAA remote ID module. That's just the basics. The purpose of this video, I'm not really interested in getting into a debate on whether or not the FAA should be able to do that or not, but obviously I personally don't like it. Anything obtrusive from the government's uh, not necessarily a good thing in my opinion, but regardless, it is what it is and uh, it's here to stay. But uh, really the reason I ordered this is because this is one of the few that, uh, maybe the only one that I'm aware of, that actually plugs into a Spectrum Smart uh, receiver and will provide telemetry for all these values. So you've got a device here, you know, if it's reasonably priced, you know, the pre-order price was, I think, a little less than what they're gonna sell them for normally, but you've got a device here that's gonna transmit telemetry over your transmitter to a spec compatible transmitter. Um, obviously, the Spectrum transmitters, uh, we'll test it on that, but uh, I've got the RadioMaster TX16S that uh, pretty certain that we'll be able to collect this telemetry data, but you can get altitude, speed, rate of climb probably, location obviously. This could be very handy if you lose your plane, as long as it's still got power, uh, you could use this to locate the plane. Obviously we'll do some tests on it to, to check the remote ID capabilities of it, but that's nothing exciting about that. A uh, few people have done that, but what I haven't seen anybody demonstrate yet is the, uh, the telemetry data coming back over this, over your receiver. Even if you don't even register this with the FAA, It'll transmit data, like right, you know, now I could go plug this in and we'll do that and I'll show you that the uh, the thing immediately starts transmitting data to the app that you can get that anybody can download. But what I'm going to do is plug this into one of my airplanes, see what kind of telemetry data it'll transmit over and that we can collect both with my Radio Master and well as the uh, Spectrum transmitter. Now my, my Spectrum transmitter is an X6 that we have here and it's got older firmware so odds are it's probably going to need... Um, a, a firmware update, but we'll see what we can get as is. The manual we'll look at in a second, but I know that your receivers do have to have at least a minimum firmware version on them. I can probably try that. I'm not sure which firmwares I've got on all my transmitters or my receivers anymore, but uh, maybe we'll try a couple of them. Let's get on with this. I don't want to waste a whole lot of time with unboxing. There's not much to it. It's a tiny little package. Um, some data on it. Open this up. You do have a little manual in here that gives you some information about uh, how to plug it into your receivers, depending on what kind of receiver you have. Shows here with uh, four different kinds of receivers, AR6250, helicopter receiver AR630, which would of course include the AR631, uh, AR637T, and then AR10100T receiver. So just shows you the different ports you can utilize to get the telemetry data and of course power the unit. Uh, over here it tells you which model receivers you are using and the minimum firmware that you need in order to uh, for it to be compatible. So for the this AR631 that I'll be using 2.46.1 is what it uh, calls for. I know at least one of mine has that, maybe more, but uh, so we'll do some tests on that. Flip it around here and then it does talk about the, you know, the quick start guide. It talks about how to get into the FAA drone zone and set it up basically just register the device rather than you know registering an airplane you're just registering this device so this device is then linked to you so when you're out flying around somebody gets the serial number off of your unit um, you know they can link that back to you somehow it also comes with a number of different uh, wiring harnesses for different kinds of connections uh, there's uh, five different harnesses here that it, it describes which ones which and which what it's for uh, you can just power it directly off its own you know a, a separate battery I've got a little 2S battery here we'll plug it into just to do some tests on it. Um, so it doesn't require that you plug it into a receiver. You can just power it. Uh, but this one, unlike some of the ones on the market, does not have its own internal battery. It's got to be powered by an external source. So normally it'll be powered off your airplane, but you can just plug a dedicated battery into it if you wanted to. And of course you have a connector with a female servo plug on it that you can use to plug it into the, the SPMA3065, which is the USB programmer, because the, there is a software update you can do on this thing. I'm going to do all my tests, but without any updates, it does recommend in here that you should uh, check it for updates so you would get into your Spectrum account. We've done that in some of our other episodes where you get on and log it and register it with Spectrum. Uh, then it's linked to your account and you can get updates for it. Without registering it, I don't think you'll be able to get any updates on it. So, yeah, you got a little piece of Velcro here so you can move it from plane to plane. 
One nice thing, if you don't have the part 107, you can use the same remote ID module, just move it from plane to plane. You don't have to uh, have a separate one. If you've got the 107, you got to have a separate one for every single UAV you've got. So real quick, let's take a look at the connections. I don't want to waste much more time on this. There's your JST connection, just to hook it to a battery. So like I've got a little 2S battery here with a JST connector. It'll plug straight into that if you just wanted to power it. Of course, all these other connections for various things. The one we'll be using is just this standard servo connection. We'll be connecting it probably to our bind port on our AR631. Uh, let's take this out. We're just going to, the first thing, I'll, first test I'll do and demonstrate for you is just plugging it into power and then uh, seeing how quickly we can see data on a, one of the UAV tra tracking apps. We'll do that and then we'll uh, hook it to a plane and, and then uh, experiment with the telemetry data we can receive off of it. All right, I'm going to be using the Open Drone ID app here. So let's fire this up. So on the bottom section here of the, uh, the app, is where the any drones in the area will pop up. And for starters, I'm just going to use this JST connector for the battery. Let's plug this in. Just using two wires, one for battery. And uh, on this overlay, watch how quickly this thing will start transmitting. As soon as you plug it in, it's going to show up on my on the app. Okay, so I'm plugging in the, the battery in three, two, one. Now, so literally within one second of plugging it in, it popped up on the uh, on the app here. There is a red light on there, and when you first plug it in, it blinks until it acquires a satellite. If it blinks rapidly, they say that there's some kind of problem with it. Uh, but it is on steady. Oh, it just blinked. Maybe it blinks periodically. Click on info. It immediately brings up a ton of information about the location. Uh, speed, the whole lot of that, that is, pops up on this. It is really fast. As soon as you plug it in, it immediately popped up. And then it uh, took it about 45 seconds to a minute for it to acquire the GPS uh, link. And now it has the location. Let's plug it in the airplane, see if we can get any telemetry out of it. All right, first check in the plane. I'm going to use my highly modified Aero Scout. Uh, I've got the standard servo plug to, I think they call it a ZH connector here. Let's plug that in. And I believe I can just plug it into the, the bind port extension, which is right here. So I'm going to plug it into that, which goes into the, uh, you know, the bind port, obviously. I'm just going to set it up here on top for now. Um, power up my radio master. Select this airplane. Okay. Just so you can see what I've done here. I've got the Sky ID just sitting on top of the airplane. And I've plugged it into the... The Aeroscots have a little bind port extension cable that comes out here. Just a male to female plug. So I've got it plugged into that. Um, you know, obviously if you're going to permanently mount it, you would you maybe do something different that would actually work ideally for the Aero Scout because you want to if you want to be able to move this from plane to plane just to plug it into that it'd be nice to have a port where you can just move it around we'll have to rediscover our uh, telemetry values but I want to get a let's go set the plane out Oops. Go set the plane out in the open sky. Sky ID has powered up. It's got a steady LED light. We'll go to the model. We'll go over here to the telemetry tab. And let's take a look here. Hopefully this is visible. Uh, let me see how many sensors have, are currently in there. We know we have 36 now. So let's hit discover new. See if that list grows. Let's see. Let's have it stop. Satellites, date. All right, so it's pretty clear. Ground speed in knots. Number of satellites. A uh, lot of cryptic information. GPS altitude. Okay, so that's actual altitude. That's not altitude. Uh, it's not a change of altitude from where you took off. It's just the actual altitude. It's pretty close. We're about 1,500 feet here. Um, now one 
number that would be nice to know is the altitude above where you took off. I don't see that. Uh, heading. Yeah, the telemetry does come right through, so that's fantastic. I didn't have to update anything. Now this one does have... Let's go, uh, let's take a quick look at and confirm which version the receiver has. Uh, let's go to system, forward programming. Alright, so this receiver does have the 2.46.1, which is the minimum it called for for that. But uh, that's pretty exciting, the data comes right through. I'm going to go get my other Aero Scout, and we'll put it on that one. Uh, I don't remember what version the receiver has on that, but we'll take a look and see if it'll collect any data. So here's my more stock. It has uh, The receiver has been unlocked, but it uh, it is pretty much stock other than that. Uh, no flapperons or any of that. Change my airplane to my regular Aero Scout. All right. All right, first let's go into the forward programming and see what version this receiver is. All right, so this will be a good test because this one has 2.38.5. 2 so according to their literature, this one should not be able to receive that uh, telemetry. So we'll go into model, telemetry. Uh, this one has not just had any telemetry discovered, so let's hit discover new. It is going to get some. All right, let's stop. We got 32 things. I'm getting data, so they're not correct. I've got the location. I've got the altitude again. I'm assuming up here we'll have satellites, date, ground speed. I don't know what difference is, but the uh, apparently the 2.46.1 firmware isn't absolutely required because I'm getting data on the Radio Master. GPS location, altitude, and speed are the primary ones I was interested in. And they're here. Pretty cool. So I guess we could watch the speed and go drive it around the yard. Let me do that see if I can uh, capture any speed. Yeah, three knots, five knots. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but let me see if I can capture it on the camera. So that second one there. Watch that, and as I go. Oh, I got hung up on a branch. Now, next thing I'm going to do, let me go grab my uh, our Spectrum NX6 transmitter. It's got all the firmware in the radio, and see if it can see any of this data. So, stand by. Let me go grab that and get it bound up to the to this Aero Scout. All right, I got my. NX6 radio. So let's get it bound up. GPS acquired. Huh. The uh, NX6 just said GPS acquired, and I know it doesn't have its own GPS, so it must have captured that from the airplane. All right, let's see what we can get here. Uh, scroll all the way to the side. Gyroscope, GPS. Now this one's got speed in miles per hour. The other one said knots. Okay, I'm gonna just drive it around a little bit and see if I see any information. Yeah, the speed's giving me a, a value. Let me see if I can capture that here. Top there, the speed. I don't know if miles per hour is accurate or not, but... Sure enough, it's got data. Now, maybe it works better if you update it. Maybe some of these values are not accurate. Uh, I can't really say with any certainty yet, but it does capture the... Uh, information uh, other than getting this thing in the air which I'm not going to do in this video I just wanted to learn for myself and share with you guys if the uh, uh, telemetry would come through on the uh, on the uh, spectrum radio as well as the radio master particularly the radio master that's kind of my thing but you know, even if you weren't interested in the remote ID 
functions of the Sky ID. If you wanted to get a device that would capture GPS coordinates, you know, altitude, speed, and all that, to get some extra telemetry data. Because I know if you buy telemetry modules to plug in to receivers, um, that cost can add up as well. So this could be a, you know, maybe a cost-effective way to get a bunch of that telemetry data, location, speed, and altitude, and all that to plug in, even if you weren't going to use it for the remote ID functions of it. But you're, you know, qualified and, uh, you know, abiding by, <laughs> abiding by the law by doing that anyway. So. Um, that was what attracted me to the Sky ID is the fact that you could get that telemetry data. So it gave it more value than just remote ID. It kind of rubs you wrong to spend money to get a remote ID just so that the, the Karens of the world can find you on their app. But um, the fact that you can get telemetry data makes the thing much more valuable, at least to me. So this is pretty neat. I like more information. Uh, you know, with my Radio Master, I can then put that information on the screen. I can data log it, see how fast your planes fly, how slow they fly. Any questions, put them in the comments. You know, I'm happy to do some tests for anybody if they want uh, to learn any more. If you got specific questions on what it will or will not do, uh, let me know. I'll probably make some more videos on it when I get one of these birds in the air and, and record some data. As always, if you found the video helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe. I haven't done a lot of videos recently just because uh, I got sick, I got COVID, and, uh, <laughs> and I didn't get around to doing any videos. So I'm just getting back into the swing of things. I've got a few videos lined up that I'm going to do with uh, some Spectrum stuff, Radio Master stuff. Keep uh, checking back for that. Thanks for watching and have a good one.